Good time zone everyone and welcome to another episode of the town of light in the last episode We are we found more about uh, Renee's stay here at this uh, as the at this in, at this in, uh, institution and Apparently this woman named Amara is the key to with what's going on with uh, Renee and without further ado, we must head to now everything is ready. the bathroom. We can go to the bathrooms. We can go along that narrow corridor in the kitchens. We'll meet her in the showers, yes. Oh, is this the... Oh, okay, no, this is different. Never mind. Oh, so we're heading back to the... To the bathroom, so we're heading back over here. Not in this ward. Not in observation, remember? Let's go to the calm ward. Okay, the calm ward. How calm is it exactly? Um. The calm ward might be upstairs. Where's the calm ward? We'll meet her in we'll we we'll along the net the kitchens. We'll meet her in the showers. Out observation. Okay, the calm ward. Interesting. That's observation. So what? This way? Oh, okay. Alright, so I was going the right way. I didn't tell anyone about the light. I knew that something terrible was happening to me. I thought that I would die, and the shame I felt was so deep that an uncontrollable restlessness took over me. I was afraid when other people were nearby. I saw fingers pointed at me, mouths laughing, condemning me. I tried to be alone. I would sit down on the ground and curled up in the dark. I would repeat a word, any word, in continuation. This helped me not to think, not to lose myself. I would spend entire days like this, hoping that my mother would ignore me. Her compassionate words hurt me and terrorized me even more, and so I had to Shout, and shout, and shout those words. After a few days, things got better, and little by little, I came out of my hiding place. But the fear was always there, under the surface, ready to strike me even harder. Okay. 
Okay, so we... Ah, aha. I thought so. Okay, so there are actual, like, choices here based upon... Okay, well, the branching paths, but I'm assuming the ending is still the same. All from chapter 5. That's interesting. Everything's ready. Let's get undressed and leave their clothes on the hooks in the changing rooms. Let's turn the water on now, and everything will be as before. I get the feeling that it's not going to be a mar that we see. I'm very curious to see what the branching path would be on the bottom row. That's... Oh. Why can't I just press the button there? Jesus! You know, I was half expecting that, but I was also expecting a stranger to... Amara was everything I could have been, but she no longer existed. I'd have loved to erase everything I did. But instead, I always went ahead and did it again. It was my fault, and she disappeared from my life. Hmm. Jesus. Ah, flashing light. Gave you injections there, which made your body and soul tremble violently. A whirlwind of anguish and unbearable pain. I lived in terror for the next time. They had taken me upstairs to that ward where no one wanted to go. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So, so what does the symbols mean then? What do the symbols mean then? Okay, so let's go back to chapter five. In a way, that's kind of that's kind of why I um uh that's why I kind of ended the the video a bit early because I knew uh. That was like a there's yeah, so there's one ending to this game, but apparently how we get to that ending depends on us. And I kind of want to experience both sides of the story. Um so it starts out here in chapter five. Okay, so let's check out the bottom row. Um Okay, 
let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. By covered. Okay, so try. Okay, maybe there's a, okay, hold on, I gotta, all right, well, that didn't take long. Okay, so, to start, oh, we have to listen to this whole March thing March 12th, 19th, skip, we can't skip, oh, thank God we have to skip it. Um, okay, so, I don't need the, okay. We have to. She yes, that's true. The war. Okay. So many things frightened me. The system that I lived in was built on fear and light. There was no mercy or understanding in the town of light. Yep, that's true. Sadly, people think that, oh, if you go to these mental health institutions, you'll be cured, you'll be saved. April 21st. She's more awake this morning and is responding to questions. Okay, so headaches. it's a different response. Okay, we have to listen to this. She became agitated when she found out her mother was there. She says that one day, many years earlier, she was with a friend of hers and met a man who made her get into a car and took her for a ride. He made her smoke cigarettes and drink liquor, and the man showed her certain things. He tried to hurt her and made her go crazy. She says he promised to marry her and made her swear to keep what had happened a secret. These facts were essentially confirmed by her mother. After that, she became arrogant and patient and hostile towards her family, especially her mother. She started taking off her clothes in public. Her moods would swing from laughter to tears. She rants. She pleasures herself. I can't remember these things, only the guilt, the stake. I know I deserve to pay for that guilt. I knew it even then. Thing will become clear. Okay. Amara, she was good. Let's look for her. So we'll see what happens here. The grounds at the back of the hospital, and then down to the kitchens. Okay, so let's go back to back. Cause there, there are no, there are no, the only monsters in this game. The only like monsters are the is 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 is. This is the road we used to take. If it weren't for her. In the grounds on that bench in spring, so many days. It was an escape, watching nature around us as she talked and smiled. And then there were the kitchens. Sometimes we stole food and ran back to the bench to eat it in secret, and we laughed. She did things to me. Sometimes she touched me. In the shower, I felt her body against mine for the first time. It was a shiver that warmed my soul. Eyes closed. The light slipped away. 
She wasn't in the system. He wouldn't let her in. That's it. She must be the key. The key to my memories. To the reasons why. Okay, so did we... Okay, so we access the bottom stuff. Okay, cool. This was an outbench. I bet you that's an achievement. Look look for the for the right bench. Um sit on. I'm so running eat it. Wait. The scent of spring. The land of light was far away, and we spent the days chatting on the stone benches. That's interesting that there's a, not even a path up here. Okay, um... That's cool that the game, like, like, had, it gives you the ability to, like, go back and really experience the game. And that's what I kind of want to do here. So, so the story... So certain events will play so certain events will play out differently um from uh, Renee's memory. So I guess the first one was more of a horrific tragic memory, I guess. Well, see what's over here. Oh, God, someone's foliage, Jesus. Okay, so we're not gonna go. Come on, come on, let's look everywhere. She must be here, I'm certain. And apparently there was like a dialogue bug where... What's this? Oh, well, shit, I found more pages. Oh, okay then. Two more pages and we'll be done with her diary. I don't know if Can't go down there. There's too much water. Okay, maybe we have to stick into the kitchen a bit longer. That's interesting. Keep looking. We mustn't give up. Where could she be? We've got to talk to her. Everything will be all right. But being here now, I don't like it. Come on, let's look for her quickly. Can't stay in here too long. They'll find us. When they found us. Come on, hurry. We've got to find her quickly. Okay. Um... We've got to get out of here. They'll find us. But not now. Not yet. Amara's not here. Maybe she's in the showers. We can find her there. The water was often cold. When it was cold, we ran away. Interesting. But when it was hot, then she came to Rene under that cruel white light. I can still feel the shivers her body gave me. Everything must return to how it was. If we recreate that magic, she'll come to us. Okay. 
Everything is ready. We can go to the bathrooms. Okay. We can go along that narrow corridor in the kitchens. We'll meet her in the showers, yes. The way the game and the, 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 the way the game explained it, it, it kind of felt like there was gonna be like a like a like a jump scare happening. Or like we shift between worlds and we have to like dodge the, the guards or whatever. I I I don't I hate dialogue. Uh, descriptors like that that's like oh yeah we got to do this quickly and it's like no there's no sense of urgency here i mean it's not amnesia the dark descent um all right well any of the amnesia titles really where it's like oh we have to hurry and do this before we get caught not in this ward not in observation remember let's go to the calm ward the tranquil one is over here get that backwards What's funny is that we could- uh, I, I love how we could still leave this place. It will not, like, you know. Showers over here. Everything's ready. Let's get undressed and leave our clothes on the hooks in the changing rooms. Okay, so let's do this. Let's turn the water on now, and everything will be as before. Alright, so... Okay, so basically the same events play the, the events play out the same, but the only difference is that that a reflection of ourself, Renee, was in the shower with her. Oh god, that's the flashing light again. Jesus. Uh, Okay. Those injections were a torture, the just punishment for what I was doing. And what about her? Who knows where Amara was? They had taken me upstairs into the ward where no one wanted to go. Okay, so... Let's look for Renee's room in the slightly agitated ward. Slightly agitated room is upstairs, I believe. Six is this way. When there was too much chaos, they closed all the windows and the door. They turned off the lights, and it was pitch black. 
Some people fell asleep. Some others stopped seeing their demons and became more calm. Here, the bathroom for the semi agitated ward. There it is. Okay. All right. Let's check out Renee's room then. Hello. shutters, the door, and switch off all the lights. We want darkness. Alright. They've put a straight jacket on. They gave you a cold shower. They suffocated you with a sheet. Jesus. They tied you to the bed. They tied me to the bed. A woman died next to me, choked by her own vomit. I, damn. She was tied down because she wouldn't stop pleasuring herself. I can still hear her death rattle. I screamed, but nobody came. Everybody screamed in there, all of them. It was then I saw the doll, which wasn't Charlotte. No, she wasn't Charlotte. was like the present, that doll, that man, the shame. Rene was increasingly divorced from reality. How will I ever find out what really happened? How will I ever find Amara again if I can't even find myself? So we have to find Amara. Amara is the key to this. Okay, and then what? The chapters? Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. And the title and, and it's titled differently. Oh no, no no no, no. it's not titled the face. I guess like the psychosis is different. Hey Montefoscoli, November twelfth, nineteen thirty nine. My dear daughter, it is with great sadness that I heard what happened. Your transfer and your sufferings are a cause of great worry for me. It will take time, but you'll see. Things will improve. <laughs> They'll treat you and you'll Bullshit! I pray a lot, every day. Write to me often, and tell me if you need anything. I promise I'll do what I can. Try to be strong. Mom. Bullshit! This is the last letter she wrote to me. Once I was put into this ward, I was overwhelmed by loneliness. After that medical examination, I received no more letters from Mom. Why is that man here? 
Why doesn't she come to see me? Did I make a mistake? It didn't seem like she wanted to abandon me. What did I do wrong? I'd like to be able to apply to her again now, to change things. See here. Oh, that is interesting. How can we write a letter? Uh, let's see. see hold on let me let me see here okay let's see Okay. Perhaps she would have listened to me. Will she reply? The letters were sent to the archive. It was their job to post them. Hey. Okay. Let me see some of the achievements. Jesus. Hey, one more diary. Okay. Let's see. Um, there 
there is one more. Diary page. Apparently, it's on this opposite end of the corridor. That's why I'm like kind of guiding myself at the moment just so I can find this last page. There you go. Okay. All right, completed the entire diary. All right, so let's see. Last where we left off, we left off at that one, that one. There you go. I remember a recurring dream from that time. I used to have plenty of nightmares, but this particular one was so real that even today, I ask myself whether it could have possibly been just a dream. I was in bed, enveloped by the warmth of the blanket. In the dark, about to succumb to sleep, when I heard the bedroom door open. I turned to face the wall and did not have the courage to turn around. I only saw a shadow cast against the wall by the light filtering in through the door. Then... I heard the door close again, and I thought that it might have been my mother who, before going to bed, used to peep in to see whether I was sleeping. However, there was no time to breathe a sigh of relief, for footsteps approached the bed, and I heard the sound of breathing close by. Fear paralyzed me from head to toe. The blankets were pulled back. I remember the chill of fresh air on my spine. Someone sat on the bed, and I trembled. Then the dream finished. The light often came when I was at school, turning my fellow pupils into puppets that would terrorize me. To me, they appeared transformed, with the bloodied heads of animals stuck where their own heads should have been. I would curl up on the floor and would even wet myself. The teacher would try to console me and would smile at me, but her teeth and her eyes would terrify me even more. Things did change. I don't know why, perhaps during the second or third year of school. It was more or less in the same period that I became friends with Bruna. I remember the sensation of joy I experienced when I felt almost normal. The light isn't coming. The dreams have gone. And I have a real friend, one who speaks to me. I would repeat this to myself proudly while looking in the mirror, where I no longer saw an embarrassing reflection. It seemed to me that the world was a difficult place, but was no longer impossible. Bruna. I did not understand what Bruna saw in me especially as she was almost two years older than me. I would tell her this every now and then, and she would joke about it, saying, Nothing. I don't see anything in you, which is what I like about you. 
and then she would hug me. But one day, she was sad and pensive and said to me, You and I are the same. Don't be fooled. You are reserved and honest, and I'm not. But that's the only difference between us. The only one. Then she began to cry. I was struck by the perception in her words, but only today, after re-examining my past, do I understand what she meant. I no longer considered my body as something disgusting and ill. Far from it. I began to look at myself, to caress myself and smell my own skin. I began to explore and experiment, finding physical pleasure. My ideas were not very clear, and I never spoke to anyone about these things. Bruna, however, spoke about them. She boasted about her love stories and her young men. To my eyes, she was very lucky, always being wooed. By marvelous, generous, and kind boys. Thus, I fantasized about her adventures, pretending that I was the main protagonist. But how could I ever be like her? Occasionally, I recall that she had black and blue marks on her body, but I was so naive that I did not understand. I did not put two and two together. It was Don Gino who explained things to me a few years later. He told me about Bruna's father and brother, but I was already very ill. The light had returned, and that thing made me suffer even more. It was my world, and it was crumbling. When I spoke to Bruna about it, she turned her head away and was silent for a long time. Prince Charming doesn't exist, René. At least not for us. I was fourteen years old. I didn't think it was possible for a boy to look at me and desire me. When he asked me if I wanted to go for a walk, I didn't say anything. I didn't even have the courage to look at him. Things improved for a number of years, then suddenly everything came crashing down. One evening I came home drunk, and the following morning a terrible crisis overcame me all of a sudden. What had I done? I was terrified. I thought I'd lost my sight. The light burned my eyes from inside. The memories of the previous day emerged in bursts, images, flashes, which unleashed something monstrous inside me. Repetition of words was no longer sufficient. Now there was a voice in my head which repeated them louder than I did, and they were words of accusation and blame. So I covered my ears and shouted and hit my head against the wall and threw up. I remember the doctor, the wall filthy with blood and vomit. My mother wasn't looking at me. Bruna was crying but trying to hide it. Charlotte was beside me. I never told anyone what had happened. He came to visit me, but I refused to see him. I became agitated. I think he liked me, even though things turned out badly. In that period, I began to suffer from memory loss. The few things I learned didn't please me at all. He told me that I was looking for him. It was all my fault. Bruna told me that sometimes I got drunk. People in the village gossiped about me. Sometimes I was covered in black and blue marks. I didn't realize what was happening to me, what I was doing. I was no longer in control of my life, from my little corner.
He felt accused, hurt. I chased him away. I insulted him. He was proud, handsome. He said things about me to other people, which he shouldn't have said. Mother caught me coming home drunk. She beat me and sent me to speak to Don Gino every day. He came back and tried to speak to me. I think he liked me. Sometimes I sent him packing and I started shouting at him. But other times I embraced him. I held him tight and loved him. But he couldn't bind himself to me. I was 16 and ill. I had no future. I didn't get out of bed for weeks. Then I did things I was ashamed of. I slept with men. The guilt tore at my soul. And the light came back to torture me. I invented stories to justify my actions. I couldn't bear my own weight. Mom found out about it. Her voice split my head. I pushed her away because I was afraid of dying, and I shouted to the whole world what was happening to me and that I didn't understand. The police arrived, and they carted me away. I remember the onlookers shaking their heads. They would be better off without me, cleansed of shame, with something to talk about for a while. Wow. Okay. Wow. Whoa. That was... That was, um... That was a story. Archives is... Right, emissions, right? I mean, that's where you would put it, right? Down here? It's their job to post them, so... Okay, so I guess it was on the- I guess it's on the second floor? Oh. Wait, why is storeroom and archive on the second floor? I don't- Okay, whatever. Whatever, I'm not gonna question it. Kinda odd that would have a storeroom and an archive because I, mean, I thought archive would be like on the first floor next to security and admin but all right well when you were sent to a lunatic asylum you lost the right to possess anything everything you arrived with was packed up and stored here even the clothes you were wearing in case you were released one day but far too many never left Oh, I have to look for hers. It's a T, right? Dear Mother, please, I beg you, get me out of this place. I'm so frightened here. You were right. I know I was wrong. I understand. I'm so ashamed. If only you knew how much. 
But now I'll behave myself, I promise. Now things will be fine. I'll work hard. I'll be very good. Your daughter, Renee. Not fulfilled. Jesus. This letter. It was Renee's letter. Just as she wrote it back then. But it was never sent. Why? Why did this happen? I received your letter, Mom. You tell me to be patient and strong, while I only feel fear and pain. And you don't write to me anymore. If only these words could be my soul, I'd tell you what was happening to me. The kids want to kill me. They all look the other way and tell me what to do. I don't understand. She helps me, but what have they done to her? Can you tell me? Will you help me? Renee. Montefoscoli, July 7th, 1940. My dear daughter, I have received no news from you. You have not contacted me in months. I'm sorry, but I don't have the money to come and visit you. Do you remember Mr. Onofrio? He'll soon be in Volterra for business. I've asked him if he would be kind enough to ask the director for some news about you. I hope he'll bring me some good news when he returns. But please write to me. I know that I was strict with you. You have to forgive me. I didn't think. I've given Mr. Onofrio a new doll for you. You told me that you lost yours, and I know you loved it so much. Jeez. It's not as nice as your Charlotte, but I hope that it will comfort you nonetheless. Keep your chin up, darling. Everything will be fine, you'll see. Mom. Montefoscoli. October 12, 1940. My dear daughter, I've written two letters to you and have received no reply. Every day, I'm anxiously waiting for a letter. Mr. Onofrio is back. He brought you the doll. Do you like it? He told me he was unable to speak to the director, but managed to see you. I pray for you every day. Even Don Gino said a prayer for you during Sunday Mass. Isn't that nice? I've made up my mind, Renee. I'm bringing you home. I've already written to the director. I told him that I'll take care of you. I'm not very well at the moment and can't work, but I'll get better soon, you'll see. And as soon as I can make the journey, I'll come and fetch you. I know you're suffering a lot, but please be strong, I beg you. Mom will come to fetch Renee, won't she? Mom is good, but she's not well. That's why that man came. The doll. Renee could have played with it while she was waiting for her to arrive. But Renee didn't have it with her. Is it one of Mom's lies? She knew that she'd hurt Renee and... No, no. Mommy's good. That man brought it. We've just remembered who he is, haven't we? It was Renee who was wrong. The doll's here. I know that for sure. Perhaps she's been abducted like all the others and is locked up here somewhere. So we have to find the doll now. Let's look for the second doll. It'll be among the bundles of the patient's belongings. Now we can open the bundle on that table in front of the window. 
You see? Mom was good. I was bad. Mom was worried about Renee and Charlotte. I abandoned Charlotte. We've abandoned her. Jeez. Wow. And that is where we're gonna end it. For this episode. Wow. Um... A lot, a lot happened in this episode. Um... Jeez, we got to know a bit more of Renee, of Renee's life before she was admitted here in, in Volterra. I believe that's the name of this institution. Um, we originally thought that, uh, but of course, uh, we originally thought that, that the mother was a monster, but it turned out that she was just a tough mother. But over time, she understood her errors and her, and her, and her misgivings, and she wanted Renee to come home. And for whatever reason, Volterra did not want to release her for whatever reason. And I think it has to do something with the pregnancy uh, that we learned um, um, in the previous chapters. Um, yeah, wow. There, There's a lot to divulge here. There's a lot to divulge here. Um, but uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're looking for more uh, uh, Let's Plays, then check out the other Let's Plays I have here on the channel. I do first impressions uh, as well, not to mention there are Twitch VODs from my past and current uh, playthroughs on Twitch. Um, there are trailer reactions, uh, podcasts, because I have a podcast, and also YouTube shorts. And I'll see you all on the next episode. Bye-bye.